outside of the Trump administration and sort of the far right nationalist wing of the Republican Party, which unfortunately is in power currently, um, there is, you know, plenty of clarity and will to uh, engage in just these like very common sense forms of international cooperation, uh, including with China. Whatever you might think about what the long term strategy with China should be, uh, I think the idea that uh, putting a pause on escalating tensions until we can figure this out is pretty widely accepted. Um, if we as progressive organizations uh, rally and put the right kind of pressure on a new administration and a new Congress, um, that uh, we can uh, get a, a pretty serious shift in, in, the, in, in terms of um, a sort of the foreign policy uh, around COVID. Uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, if we do that, then we'll see um, uh, a similar response um, from China, which is actually, you know, compared to the Trump administration, made some pretty good um, move, motions around uh, international co cooperation. You know, they recently joined uh, COVAX, this scheme for uh, equitable pricing and distribution of a vaccine, uh, this international partnership that the vast majority of the country, uh, the, the world is, is now um, uh, involved in. Reversing the Trump administration's position on that, that seems totally doable. Uh, the long-term trajectory of a deteriorating U.S.-China relationship isn't going to change. I think, I think that um, the Democrats and the Biden administration will manage that sort of decline in U.S.-China relations more moderately and more responsibly, and it'll look different, but uh, the trajectory, the overall trajectory is going to be the same. And that is going to um, likely have a negative impact on global cooperation to, uh, around the pandemic. It's going to have more serious impacts long-term around global cooperation uh, to be climate change and to deal with global poverty. The Biden team, their approach is going to be to focus on building alliances, like an anti-China alliance. And I think they're telling themselves that this is like a form of multilateralism that's going to be an alternative to like the Trumpist mega nationalism, but it's just a different path to the same destination. Uh, I think they, they think it's going to play out in terms of like, you know, we'll build more pressure and China, China will finally cave in and make the concessions we want. And that's, no, they're just going to feel more threatened.